I've heard amazing things about HTMX for several months now, and I've been really wanting to try it out. And then I heard also about a new feature in Astro, one of my favorite frameworks, which is partials. And these two things go hand in hand. So I wanted to build a simple demo to be able to test these two out and see how they work. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to build uh, this feature, which has surprisingly fairly little code, which is pretty cool. But it's a search for users. So I can type in Jamie here, and then I can type in James. Notice there's a little bit of a delay in here. So this is something that HTMX is gonna take care of for us. Basically what it's doing is it uh, is making an HTTP request on change to the Astro backend. It's running in server side rendering mode. And if we look inside of here and type in uh, Jamie, you can see it's gonna make that fetch request to slash results with a query string inside of it. And it happens not immediately, but after a subtle delay. And that's so that you not making infinite requests on every different keystroke. It's waiting for a delay in these keystrokes before it actually makes that query, which is gonna be much more optimal. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll have links to HTMX and uh, partials in the video that you can go and reference as well. And then lastly, I'm gonna use uh, Zeta as my database. Now Zeta is a sponsor of mine, a partner of mine, but I use them in all my demos and it's a blast to work with. So if you wanna follow along, uh, you can set up a free database with them and I'll just show you what I have and what I'm doing. So let's go to the code. So I don't need to restart VS code first. Um, but I have a regular uh, Astro project running and this is uh, just from scratch. So you could just do NPM uh, new Astro at latest and it'll install a new Astro app for you. And let's go back to localhost 4321 and refresh. So this is what a starter Astro project looks like. So let's do some basic styles in here. I'm actually just gonna copy in the layout file. Not a whole lot is gonna change, uh, but it's basically gonna add some Tailwind classes. So I'll paste that in, and this reminds me that we do also, I want to add Tailwind in here. I don't know how you are, I use Tailwind with almost everything now. And so with the MPX Astro add command, you can just add Tailwind, which is pretty cool. And that will, uh, if we say yes to all this, go ahead and install dependencies, add the configuration, et cetera, which is pretty neat. So that works really well. And boom, that's done. So inside of here, we have um, we have a full screen. We have the gray background. We set a max width. And the, the interesting thing in here is we include the script to pull HTMX. Now, I don't know if there's like a better way to do this where we can do it with NPM packages or something. All the things I see is people just including the script tag to the hosted uh, source code for HTMX. So that's what we're going to do. But if you have a better way of doing, doing this, let me know in the comments. Uh, below. So we can save this and then uh, run it. And I'm going to open up the index page and basically just kind of wipe all this out. So this is going to be wrapped in the layout and uh, we'll want to add a little bit of stuff in here. Not a whole lot. Um, so I'm going to start with an H1. Let's go back and get that closing tag and just put an H1 in here that says search for users. So pretty basic stuff in here so far, mostly just set up, which, um, which works. Now from here, I'm gonna paste in a little bit uh, more code and we'll talk about what this is. So this is actually should be a form, sorry about that. And uh, this is gonna have one input for, uh, which is a type of uh, text. And this is gonna be used as the search input for the user. So one thing to notice is that the ID of the search of the of where the search results are going to go inside this div, this is uh, labeled right below. So it's ID of search dash results. So if you look in here, we type something, nothing's going to happen. And this is where HTMX comes in. And this is pretty cool the way this works. So we can add annotations to this input to tell it to do to basically make fetch requests uh, wherever we want. And so where are we going to make the fetch request? Well, we'll come to that in a second or we'll actually build it out in a second. But inside of here, we're gonna have an HX get, which means whenever this thing gets triggered, and we'll talk about the trigger next, where are we gonna send this request? And in this case, we're gonna make the request to slash parcels slash users slash results. Now, HTMX and Astro, or HTMX in general, I feel like is a totally different way of building applications. And I've been called out on Twitter, like this is how we used to do things. I, I really don't think this was a common way to do it. But what HTMX does is it has some sort of trigger and makes some sort of HTTP request to the backend. 
And that thing doesn't send back JSON, it sends back actual markup uh, template. And that's what a partial is gonna represent for us inside of Astro. I feel like this is completely different than the way we think about building things now. I feel like this is completely different than how we traditionally built things with Ruby on Rails and Node Express, et cetera, back in the day, 10 years ago or whatever. Anyway, I think it's new. I think it's very different, but I think it also is really cool. So we have we have uh, where we're going to send the request. Now we actually have the trigger. And the trigger is kind of interesting because the syntax here can kind of be a lot, but we can have it on a key up. And then we can also add the annotation of changed. And this is saying only if the input has changed from the previous value before the key up, which is actually really useful. And then we can have a delay in here. Now this is good because this allows us to not send a request every single keystroke, but after the user kind of pauses and I'm doing 500 milliseconds, this could be kind of whatever you want. Um, probably something in the milliseconds is, is what you want, unless you are really trying to throttle, throttle these requests. And the last thing is the target. Now this is going to be where the ID, or I guess you could use, I guess you could use a class in here, although that would be silly. Most likely you want an ID. But the ID of the DOM element, where you want to put the markup that comes back from the server. So real quick, we have, we're gonna make a get request to this endpoint. We need to create that in a second. We're gonna have, <clears throat> have a trigger that says every time we key up inside of this input, but only if it's changed from the previous value, and we wanna have a delay of 500 milliseconds so we're not constantly sending requests. And then, when we get back those results, where are we gonna put that markup? We're gonna put it inside of this div down here. Now we obviously don't have the backend set for this. So I actually don't know what this is gonna do. Let's try this out. If I open up the network tab and start to type, it should send a request and then we'll just get a 404. I don't know if that's gonna show on here. Yeah, I guess that doesn't throw an HTMX error specifically. So it just makes the request, it either works or it doesn't. So now we need to go into our source. We need to go into pages and then we'll create a new file. And this is gonna be partials slash user slash results dot astro. And I think we can't use a, a leading um, a leading slash. And did you know you could type the folder path right inside of the name of the file? I, th I think that's pretty cool. So you can see inside of here, we have partials, we have user, then we have results. So if we just added a little bit of markup here, something that says, hey, what we'll see is as we type, this should make that request and then we get back this markup. So that means that now we need to actually get the query from that request and, um, and use that inside of our template here, inside of our partial. So inside of our Astro component, we're going to add our delimiter for the JavaScript basically. And we first need to mark this as a partial. So we can do this as export uh, const partial is true. Mm, yes, partial true, cool. Now the other thing we need to do is update or open the Astro config and we need to set a, a output to server. Now this is going to basically enable this to be SSR where we're gonna be able to run code on the server at runtime before we actually respond back with a markup. Now, because we're doing this or because we enabled this, we can now reference the query from astro.url.searchparams. This will get all the query or search params. And then we want to get the one associated with the key of query. Astro search param, oh, dot get. So get those or search params and then get the specific one that we're looking for. And then uh, what we could do, we could just, um, we could say query and then let's just log out this query. So if we start to type, we should see we get query ASDA. So we're seeing that query actually come through. Uh, we actually need to return a markup that is visible in here. So we could go ahead and make this a P tag and then add a class of text white. That would give, at least make this visible. So we should see this. And then we should also see if we delete, we should see that it's still uh, doing its thing as well. So now what we wanna do is actually search our database for users uh, that match that query. Now, the cool thing about Zeta is it has search built in. So I'm going to use a, a database that I've already created. If you wanted to go through this process, you could create your own table or database for free in Zeta and then take advantage of search as well. So I have this demo that I've been working on called Potluck Pal. And one of the things I've done is have, have a video that on this if you want to check it out is gate pages in our application if the user hasn't completed their user profile. And so user profiles just have name and username 
but it makes sure after you sign up, it completes those things before you can go anywhere else. So we have user profile information in here. And so I'm not gonna go through the database and details. You can just see that I have these two properties, username and name, and then the user ID, and this is tied to a user in kind. So we're using kind authentication for this, and we just take the user's ID in kind and then store it in this database for the user profile. So you will need to install the Zeta CLI if you don't already have it. Um, so you could do npm install dash G uh, Zeta CLI, CLI, not CLIE. And then from there, you can do an npm or excuse me, a Zeta uh, login. I've already logged in, so I've gone through this. And then after that, you can do a Zeta init. Now this is gonna configure this project to work with Zeta uh, database. And so it's asking you which uh, table or which database do you want to work with? In this case, I'm going to choose Potluck Pal. What it's going to do is it's going to generate source code for us in TypeScript. So I'll choose TypeScript. And then where do we want it to generate in the source Zeta TS file? And this is going to generate all the types for us in addition to the environment variables. So notice that uh, added the API key and the branch. So the main branch in, in Zeta, by default, you can have multiple branches of your database, which is pretty cool. So with this, inside of this data.ts file, this is where it looks at the table and it generates all the types for you. You can scroll through and see all this stuff. And at the end of it, it exports the Zeta client. So this is what we're gonna import in here to actually do our query. So we can say the Zeta client equals, and then we'll call a new Zeta client. And we can get the import uh, from that Zeta file. And then typically this is all we would do, but uh, Zeta client by default is looking for an API key at process.env dot uh, Zeta API key down here. In this case, in uh, Astro, it uses V. So in vari environment variables are not accessed the same way. So we need to tell it, we need to get this environment variable from import.meta.env dot, and then we'll say Zeta API. So that should give us a client that we can use to query, and then we can uh, destructure the records from the result, and we're gonna call the search. So await zeta client dot db dot user profile. So notice the IntelliSense in here for our tables, pretty cool. And then we'll call the search, and we're gonna pass in a search uh, for the query string. And this is going to say that it's going to have an issue because uh, it could be null. We could come back to this. And then lastly, we're going to configure this to define our target as an array of what are the different columns of the da database or the table that we want to search on. So we want to search by username. Notice I still get IntelliSense for this. Pretty cool. And then email. So we can search for the user either based on their username or email. And you could add other properties if you needed or wanted to as well. And then... Uh, what we're going to do is now display that stuff. And this is just kind of simple markup. So I'll just copy and paste this in and we can look at this together. So uh, we can look at the records and say, if we get nothing back, we can say no search results. So just a piece of text that says nothing there. Otherwise, we're going to iterate through each record. We're going to get a reference to the user and then display the user uh, name and the user user name. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it does. So let's see, now we need to run this again. And this should be pretty cool. So let's go back and uh, get to our running application. Let's refresh this and let's search J-A-M-E. And hopefully, if nothing goes wrong, which it obviously did, uh, no branch was passed, that's okay. Target config, column email, not found. And actually that's completely wrong. That should be the username and name, not the email. So that was just wrong. And let's try again. So let's type in Jame and we should get all the users that have J-A-M-E or uh, notice that Jamie is here and that's because by default Zeta search has a tolerance of one character. So basically it says, what's one character I could change in this thing to be able to get the search? And there's a threshold, you could say one, two, three, I think. So you could loosen the, uh, the range of things that you query or tighten it. That's not the right words, but you could be more specific or stringent on how you search, or you could be less. But if I search Jamie, this should only return Jamie because I, I can't get to any of those other names otherwise. And then there's Bobby, uh, we should give those. And notice this is searching by name and then the, uh, the username. So I could also search, if I just search wild, 
that's in, or does that not, that not match? So that shows maybe it's just because it doesn't start. And there may be parameters for handling that search as well. But pretty cool that search is already built in. And then I think really amazing that HTMX has these utilities to just do all these things for you. And these are common things. Anytime you're going to use an anchor tag or a form to make an HTTP request, to be able to just have those things be configured, because this is stuff we're going to do a lot of the time, right? Like we're going to have, we're going to make an HTTP request based on a click. And then you can just return markup and then swap out the markup or just replace or put markup inside of where it goes. I thought there would be more, I guess you have to go down to docs to get to more examples, let's see, or reference maybe. But there's so many things that you can do with this. And I even found, um, I told it, I didn't want it to make a query if the um, if the input was empty. And there's actually a way to do this as well. I thought this was really cool. So if we go back to the HTMX that we put in here on the trigger, inside of brackets after the key up, we can actually run JavaScript, which is really interesting. And so inside of here, we can grab the target.value and we can say the length is greater than two. This means it'll only make a request if you input, um, if you add an input that is a length greater than two. So if we type in uh, A, it's not gonna do anything. If we type in A, M, I, that says no results because it's doing kind of a start to finish. So if we do J, A, M, I, E, now we should actually see results come back for Jamie. So you can actually do a lot of customization with this. I think there is a potential limitation though of like, being restricted to their syntax. I think that's a downside, but it is really cool what they're able to do for you. So there's tons of different triggers. You can swap out content, you can do transitions, you can do web sockets and server sent events. There's tons you could do in here. And then when you combine this with partials, which allows you to just define this template that when it basically gets requested as an HTTP request, it's just gonna send back uh, this partial and then HTMX will replace that. So I think this is super cool. I'm really curious, what do you think? Do you see a future where you might be using HTMX for something you're building? Do you see that pairing well? I think it does with Astro. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, if you're interested in Astro a little bit more deeper, I have a full Astro course. It doesn't get into uh, these features, although there may be more content in the future, but it does a lot with static site generation, server-side rendering, working with Zeta database, working with basic authentication, building this full stack markdown blog, which has categories and comments and all sorts of stuff. So I think it's a lot of fun. There's a lot there. You can check it out at uh, astrocourse.dev. In the meantime, let me know what you think about HTMX and Astro Partials. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.